Jesus said to the crowd, When you see a cloud rising in the west, you say immediately that it is going to rain, and so it does. And when you notice that the wind is blowing from the south, you say that it is going to be hot, and so it is. You hypocrites, you know how to interpret the appearance of the earth and the sky. Why do you not know how to interpret the present time? Why do you not judge for yourselves what is right? If you are to go with your opponent before a magistrate, make an effort to settle the matter on the way, otherwise your opponent will turn you over to the judge, and the judge hand you over to the constable, and the constable throw you into prison. I say to you, you will not be released until you have paid the last penny. The Gospel of the Lord. Today the Church celebrates the liturgical memorial of St. John Paul II. It is said that he is a saint we have all known because he has passed through many of our streets and squares. He has visited many of our cities and there are many of us who have gone to be with him, even if sometimes only fleetingly watching him pass by in the Pope Mobile. His memory is indelible in the hearts of many of us. I don't think it can be said that he is the Pope we have all loved, because many made his life impossible or tried to make it impossible for him. But yes, many of us have known him and loved him, and we do not forget his memory or his teachings. This is not the time to summarize everything he did. Encyclicals, travels, catechism, the Code of Canon Law, nor all that he taught in his many messages of all kinds. But at this moment, I would like to recall only two things. First, his love of divine mercy, his love for God which he sees as mercy, a mercy that comes to save the sinner, a true mercy, a mercy that does not deceive the sinner by telling him that what he has done is not wrong, a mercy that tells the truth but with charity. And he died precisely on the eve of the liturgical feast of divine mercy. He is the Pope of divine mercy. And before the divine mercy, we have to say what St. Faustina taught us. I trust. I believe that this message of trust is the message that John Paul II left us from that first moment when he appeared on the balcony of St. Peter's Basilica and said to Catholics with the energy he had at the age of 58, do not be afraid. They were the words of Christ, but putting his mouth and at that moment of enormous confusion in the church, they seemed like new words that we needed to hear. Do not be afraid. But our courage did not come from ourselves or that the world was going to become complacent. Our courage came in trusting in God. Trust in God. God is great. He really is. If you believe in God, trust in Him. God is the Almighty. Really, really. Trust. How many moments in the past and now, the boat of the church seems to be already irritably sunk. We get nervous like the apostles on that night in the middle of the lake with a storm. Lord, wake up, we are sinking. And he tells us, trust, trust, everything is foreseen, nothing escapes from my hand. Even if you do not understand it, even if you are in the anguish of Good Friday, trust. I believe that we must always remember St. John Paul II's lesson on Divine Mercy personally. 
in the events of each one of our lives, in the things of our family, in the situations of our country. How can we not think of Venezuela, for example, but also the situation of the Church and made that voice that he transmitted to us surround again and again in our hearts. Do not be afraid, trust. The second thing I would like to emphasize, and it could not be otherwise, is his love for the Blessed Virgin Mary, how he conquered our heart, knowing that he loved her as we love her, or as we want to love her. That totus tos, Mary, which was a phrase of St. Louis de Montfort, that he made his own and brought to life. Love for Jesus, a courageous, mainly love, a love of men who are not afraid, a love of trust and love for Mary. Christ placed in the first place of life, Christ is the only Redeemer of the world as the only way of salvation, as the only who has the fullness of truth. Christ is our Savior in whom we trust. And Mary, always at Jesus' side, Mary always ready to do God's will, who accompanies us in the joyful hours and in the dark hours, who is at the hour of celebration and who is at the hour of sorrow, Trust in God and trust in Mary. There is a God who loves us and we have a mother who loves us. Today, on this day in which we remember St. John Paul II, let us renew this trust in Almighty God and in our beloved Mother. Amen.